Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. Welcome back, TTM Trades. Look, we're going to jump right into it. We're going to talk about the market. We're going to look at uh, the market, the 11 market sectors real quick, and then we're going to talk about the uh, SPY along with the VIX. All right, so hopefully I don't take up too much of your time, so let's jump right into it. Now, looking at the market sectors, is something I want to point out to you all because this is very key. All right, you can see some of the market sectors uh kind of selling off in the day and some of them still holding up but if we pull the market sectors up 10 per page right if you look you'll see a lot of the market sectors are felling right at that middle bollinger band okay and it's very important that it gets above the middle bollinger band because that's what sets the overall stock etf up whatever to start its uptrend all right um i have rule that i call 30 for 30 right 30 over 30 30 under 30 so on and so forth it helps me distinguish what's in a strong uptrend weak uptrend strong downtrend weak downtrend right so 30 under 30 as you can see here under is 30 sma under is weekly 30 sma which is that 150 period moving average that puts the stock in a strong downtrend all right you can see here strong downtrend when it breaks above that bottom one standard deviation it takes it out of that strong downtrend and it puts it in a consolidation state as it stays within the one standard deviation, right? And it's a pretty widespread, again, a lot of volatility in the market. And right now we're looking at the communication service sector, which really isn't a big deal because you're going to see this across the board. So kind of a widespread from 41.58 up to 49.43. Right now, if the stock gets over the daily middle Bollinger Band, it takes it out of a strong downtrend into a weak downtrend which now says that this stock etf whatever you may, may be trading is now in a weak downtrend and is showing strength to possibly be recovering to the upside if it gets back above its middle bollinger band and consolidates and the bands begin to constrict and then it reverses and head back to the upside hence as you see here any stock that's in a strong uptrend will consolidate on the middle bb continue running pull back consolidate continue running pull back stayed within the one standard deviation to show that it's only consolidating and not going into a downtrend and then continue the next leg up so as we go through each of the 11 sectors as you can see here i said the middle bollinger band and that 150 period sma were two very important overhead resistances that these etfs and stocks need to get over so communication sector hit the middle bb immediately sold off right which could possibly go until tomorrow as we continue to pull back down possibly Consumer discretionary, middle BB, sold off. Consumer staples been running strong, got above the middle BB, tried to continue rallying up to the 150 period SMA, sold off right here in the day, could possibly pull back, we'll see. Energy sector, hit the middle BB, tried to get above it, sold off. Um, financial sector, pushed up into that middle BB, sold off. Healthcare sector, got above the middle BB, pushing up to this 150 SMA, and is beginning to sell off industrial sector hit that middle bb sold off and we can keep going material sector pushed up into the middle bb sold off still holding above it real estate middle bb sold off uh what sector is this technology sector which has been strong pushed up to the 150 period sma immediately sold off so we're hitting key areas of resistance and it looks like the market is selling off in these areas middle bb sell off on the utility sector okay now this doesn't necessarily mean that the market is going to go back into a strong downtrend but um that's telling you it's a lot of overhead resistance in that area as far as the middle bollinger band in the 150 period sma now jumping into the spy what happened today with spy all right as we look at the spy let me fresh trying to pull up the monthly chart and the monthly chart really isn't a big deal right now because we're still within the month. This would be more key to look at as we get more towards the end of the month. But something to look at, I said earlier that 275 was a very important line of resistance, right? I told you that middle Bollinger Band has been holding up on the monthly chart consistently. One, two, ever since 2008 when we came out the financial crisis. One, two, three, four. And then we fell through it. Now, as you can see, we rallied to push that 275. And then as you can see beginning of april we kind of sold off right we go to the weekly chart 
that 275 is the bottom one standard deviation Bollinger Band, which if the weekly recovers above it, it'll take the weekly chart out of its downtrend status and now put it in a consolidation state as long as it holds above that 275. But it pushed to that 275 and you got some slight selling uh, in the day today for this week. All right, and you can also see the 150 period SMA sitting there and that uh, bottom one standard deviation. So um, I don't know if we'll see the weekly chart come out of this downtrend, but I would pay attention to this resistance area moving forward to see if the market can get above it and hold above it. But I'm telling you right now, looking at the other 11 sectors and how they're selling off and struggling at their middle Bollinger Band and their 150 pair SMA, I highly doubt that the SPY will be able to hold and get above this um, with some solid strength and if it does there may be immediate sell off to pull it back below it so i keep an eye on that again the spy got above that middle bonds band and immediately sold off but it's still holding above it as it tested that 275 area so what we want to see going into tomorrow is if the market opens up at 268 and holds above this 266 middle bonds band um and if it can hold and consolidate above that area then that'll help solidify the spy daily chart to try to make a push up to 301 to its 150 period sma so we'll keep an eye on that now if we zoom into the intraday charts we kind of get a feel for it, what the market is going to possibly do going into tomorrow so looking into the two hour chart again you got that strong rally in the uh late march to run the market up pull back right here and then you got another strong run with this gap up uh yesterday and then another gap up today which immediately began to sell off so Two hour chart is still showing some strength and finally pushed up into that positive ter uh, territory, uh, but it has to hold and stay within that positive territory. And I do think we're due for a pullback here as you can begin to see some of the um, short term averages such as the RSI is beginning to pull back. All right. Now, I do looking at the spy, like I said, uh, yes, in yesterday's video, we were due for a pullback to the 150 pair SMA on the five minute chart which happened today all right the 150 period sma was sitting at 254 before market open when i said hey we need to pull back to the 150 period sma of course we got that gap up but then we finally pulled back to that 150 period sma now looking at the two hour chart it's showing some strength but it's not strong because it's still in bear territory below that zero line and it needs to fully get above it on strength from this moment forward and it needs to get above that uh, 150 period SMA, which is now pulling down to the 275 area, which is this key area of resistance. Now, I highly doubt we break above this 275 area moving forward. OK, we may get another goofy rally sometime this week to push back up into it. But I think that is a strong line of resistance. And uh, we're going to pretty much fade back to this 256 area to this 248 area, which isn't bad for spy okay because again if you are within the one standard deviation bollinger bands the two green lines here then that means that time frame is consolidating okay if you break above those one standard deviations then that means you're trending up as you can see here okay broke above it started trending up that trend immediately fell again here trend is on the downtrend as is below its bottom one standard deviation bollinger bands but now as you can see we're consolidating within the one standard deviation band so as i do see a pullback here uh with 256 sitting as support and a possible 248 pullback if that 248 fails then that will put the spy back into a downtrend to go back and retest a double bottom at 218 and or create a lower low so key areas to pay attention to 275 which is the weekly charts one standard deviation which will pull the spy out of its downtrend on a weekly basis and then as you can see here is the monthly middle bollinger band sitting at 275 which if we get back above 275 in hold on a month-to-month -month basis then that sets the spy overall to try to reattempt its higher uh to reattempt its high back in that 330 range okay but i really see that unlikely moving forward now again the two hour chart why do i think we're going to pull back to this 256 to 248 range well if we zoom in a little bit more to the 30 minute chart as you can see here we're already starting to show weakness all right where we took puts here on uber due to the spy showing some weakness as the pmo began to flatten out and converge on its averages and then we finally got the drop here and then where we uh should have took calls here as the pmo began to converge and flatten out and then finally break out here again you can see it starting to cross over to show that this short-term rally and this trend 
uh, is showing weakness and it could be possibly turning downward on a 30 minute chart, uh, which will push it back down to those averages we talked about around 256 and 248. So the 30 minute chart, 150 SMA is sitting right at 252 with the bottom one standard deviation sitting at 255. So I see that as a strong line of support uh, moving forward, which is that middle BB on the two hour chart. So I'm looking for a pullback all the way to that 252 to 255 range. Now, again, if we fail that strong line of support on the 30 minute chart, then the next line to catch us is 248 uh, on the two hour chart. And again, we lose that 248 that puts the two hour chart in a downtrend which will then take the day-to-day -day chart all the way back down to 240 on this one standard deviation. And if that fails, then we go back to retest a double bottom on the SPY. So moving forward, what is my plan? Well, first thing this morning on this rally, I took April 9th, uh, 267 puts uh, two days of expiration on this rally here uh, for $2.42 as we got that pullback here um i think the spot puts from went from 242 right around to 490 give or take um i was up a little over 70 percent and then the market began to rally now when it pushed up to the bottom one when it pushed to this top one standard deviation bollinger band i continued to hold as i began to see my profits dwindle i went from 70 percent up to 20 percent here and then when it broke out like this uh that head fake made me close out my position which i really wish i didn't because uh i think when it pushed up to 273 i was even on my initial buy-in um around 240 so i closed the position out broke even uh, i think i took like a ten dollar loss or something like that broke even and then immediately the market resume back down to the 150 pair SMA like I talked about yesterday now if I would have followed my setup um, again me trying to do multiple things at one time um, if I'd have followed my setup then I would have known this was a bogus rally because as you see here the uh, PMO again which I've completely smoothed out to ignore all of these small moves and to just pinpoint the overall momentum of the trend you can see here the PMO was below its short-term average and it was continuing to trend downward um, which would have showed me that, you know, that was a BS rally and not to uh, close out my position. So right now, those $2.42 puts I bought on this uh, spike early morning, the first thing I bought right here on this candlestick, um, they're worth right around $5.95, to, I think with the high being at $6. And then again, this is going to drop more tomorrow um as we break below that 150 period sma which is the 30 minute chart middle bb again as you can see here uh i think we're going to drop more tomorrow and go back to this line of support sitting at that 255 to 252 range so that would have really put me up on those puts uh give or take two to three hundred percent if i would have held so what i'm looking at is hopefully the futures do not sell off tonight i'm looking for them to possibly hold and then give us a small short-term rally back up to that bottom with that top one standard deviation send that 270 if we rally back up into that 270 range which correlates to the one standard deviation because a lot of times when you break through those lines of support the price action goes back to re-attempt it so uh, we felt that top one standard deviation as the market was trending on the 30 minute chart as we fell through i'm looking for the market to try to rally back to that 270 271 and then spot the weakness for the reversal on the next leg down on the 30 minute chart to test that 252 which then i will grab more one to two day puts as this would be a short term trade uh to try to make some quick game okay um so overall what are we looking at we know the spy needs to pull back all right it had a nice rally it needs to pull back to that 256 range like we talked about um that 252 to 255 256 range right up in here on the 30 minute chart which is the two hour charts middle bollinger band again if that fails then that leaves us 248 right where you had this consolidation that's why the bottom one the standard deviation bollinger band is currently sitting there because that's the last line of support if that fails then that puts the two hour chart back below its two bands and back into a downtrend which then we would see the pmo crossover and fail to get back in bull territory above that zero line to start heading back downward okay uh, so keep an eye on the SPY. The next couple of days will be very telling 
on which direction the spy is going to go because we've already pushed into that 275 strong line of resistance um, first thing this week. So if for the rest of the week going into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we struggle to get back above this 240, 275 and close the week out above that, then that would tell you that the spy is going to reverse and go back down for a double bottom or start to create its next leg down as I talked about two videos ago. All right. Uh, now let's talk about the VIX real quick. We'll pull it up because the VIX and the SPY moves hand in hand um, and they move inverse to one another. Now granted they have moved out of sync once before in the past uh, but for the most part they move inverse of one another. All right. Now just looking at the VIX again they call this the fear gauge quote unquote but all it is is a put call ratio based on how many puts are being uh placed in the market on certain indexes of the s p uh, certain stocks of the s p and based on uh hedge fund managers hedging their portfolios with those said puts then that gets reflected in the vix okay and the more puts and the more hedge fund managers hedging their portfolios that begins to be a telling sign of more risk and or volatility to enter the market so again looking at the vix all right the five minute chart uh just turned very bullish but again be aware it's the five minute chart you'll get a lot of signals on a five minute chart is good for day trading one or two days and then you know leaving it at that but the five minute chart has crossed above its 150 period sma and it is in positive territory as far as the pmo so five minute chart very bullish what we need for that now is to feed into the 30 minute chart on this bullishness as you can see the bands are beginning to constrict very tightly hence volatility cyclical low volatility as you can see here breakout of high volatility big drop again another series of low volatility but with the five minute chart trending upward now positive territory it looks like the VIX is going to break out to the upside to attempt that 255. Now, with that being said, if the VIX breaks out tomorrow or you start seeing the VIX trend up tomorrow to get above that 255, this 150 SMA, um, excuse me, that 55 is 150 pair SMA, then that correlates with uh, the two hour chart getting back above its middle BB. Okay, now if the two hour chart gets back above its middle Bollinger Band, uh, and begins to consolidate and holds on this 150 pair SMA with the PMO flattening out right above that zero line Like I see a lot of stocks do as you see here flattening out on that zero line then that tells you that um, Hedge fund managers and big-time investors are starting to hedge their portfolios again Now why would they hedge their portfolios because they see that risk also known as volatility is fin to enter the market and they're hedging their portfolios, right? So the VIX will give us a fair warning if we see that. If we begin to see the PMO begin to flatten out like this and the VIX is holding above its 150 SMA on the two hour chart, okay? Uh, again, which is the uh, daily chart, the middle BB. If we begin to see that with some consolidation, then that might be a, a, a tall tail sign that uh, volatility is going to re-enter the market and the VIX is going to create another high spike and back up to the upside, okay? Um, which means the SPY has hit its resistance of 275 and now is about to fall further, uh, which creates more volatility in the market, the fear index. Now, the VIX is still in a very bullish position, okay? The VIX is above both its averages, long term and short term yes it did cross over but when it does that in a positive territory but both its averages i say that it is consolidating all right so as you can see here pull it back right above its uh bottom one standard deviation didn't break below it to put it in a downtrend it got right above the bottom one standard deviation now you can see some buying not some buying but puts uh portfolios being hedged to show that the vix is now holding in this area all right which shows that um, I would say in another week or so, you would be able to tell which direction the VIX is going to break out along with the SPY. And that will give you a rough idea on uh, what hedge fund managers are thinking as far as which direction the SPY is going to go. Okay. Um, so we'll keep all these items in mind um, as far as the 11 market sectors, the SPY and the VIX. But the VIX is beginning to show some strength. 
as a five minute chart is in positive territory with the PMO and above it's 150 SMA. Now we need to see the 30 minute chart uh, do the same thing. We need to get that PMO to get above its long term average, which has been uh, holding it down. If it gets above its long term average, then that tells me that now the VIX is consolidating for a possible breakout to the upside and SPY is consolidating for a possible breakout back down to the downside to start creating another uh, lower low okay i still believe go look at my past videos that the spy needs to pull back down to this 167 range which is this last area consolidation back in 215 2015 uh back down to that 167 to 195 range where you see this area consolidation at and uh, i i still believe that's going to happen all right but it's going to take some time as the market moves sideways um and the weak hands get shaken out, all right? But TTM trades, that's all for today. That's what I see with the market. Again, the Discord is down below. Leave a comment. Hit the thumbs up. If you got any questions, hit me up in the Discord. Till next time, I'm out. Peace. Griffin, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed.